Today, for creative computation, we will be focused on reusing and remixing existing resources to create new projects and supplement our learning. Here we have Super Mario Bros. released in 1985, the most iconic platformers of all time, thanks to PII89 for the gameplay footage. This website right here is called The Spriter's Resource. It has artwork from all of the existing games from the original Nintendo up to the GameCube and beyond. The game page for Super Mario Bros. has the artwork for Mario and Luigi, the enemies and bosses, and all of the different stages. And these are a really nice resource for young programmers to have that don't have a whole lot of art skills yet, but they want to make something that looks cool with block programming. After we download the artwork for Mario and Luigi, we choose to upload a sprite, and I realize you can't see the dialog, but here is the artwork that we downloaded from Spider's resource. And at first glance, there looks to be a hundred different pictures for Mario and Luigi. But don't worry, most of these are just different color palettes representing different things that are happening during the game. These top two rows are the original and Super Mario animation frames. You see the ones for swimming over here, big and small, as well as a shrinking, and some sort of a looks like he's shooting a fireball animation. But s original Super Mario doesn't do that. I'm going to use my selection tool over here to exclude everything but the top two rows for Mario and then remove those to the center of the screen. When I zoom in over here you can see the three colors for original Nintendo Mario. I'm going to use the paint bucket to remove this pixel border around the sprites and then I'm going to remove the color palette too. I right click and duplicate this sprite so that I can split up the work over here. On my bottom copy, I'm going to remove the big Super Marios. Then after I finish removing the big Marios, I remove the little Marios from the top copy. Which leaves us with one copy of big Marios and one copy of small Marios. If you want to consider this as an algorithm, we're progressively getting down to one Mario by decreasing the amount of frames that we're dealing with over here little by little. I make duplicates, I split up the work, and then I repeat. And as I work from my way from the outside in, I start to work closer and closer to the sprites so I can tell where the pixels are. Here we have the animations for Super Mario's walking and his running, jumping, crouching, and pole climbing and it's pretty important to get them near the center. A few moments later. Here we isolated Mario standing idle and we're going to name our costumes according to what they're doing. This is going to be number one of three for Mario's run animations. And the reason that I'm zooming in more over here is so that I can make sure these sprites are all standing in the same spot on the same crosshair when I put them on the center after separating them. And the reason for that is that when they're all in the center, the animation will be smooth. And it's kind of mind-boggling to think about how few pixels we started off the most famous video game character with. I'll show you the walking animation real quick and then we'll move on to building the rest of the frames for Mario. 20 minutes later. Okay, so this process is a little bit tedious, but the payout is pretty nice when you have a lot of different frames of Mario to work with. Hmm, did you ever notice that Mario's eyeballs are shaped like the letter L? One hour later. Yeah, little Mario has regular eyes. It's Super Mario that has those messed up eyes. One eternity later. So there you go folks, we have all of the animated frames for Mario. He jumps, he swims, he climbs, he gets damaged. Now that I did this, I can share this with you guys so that you don't have to go through all the trouble. This is the value of sharing, remixing, and reusing in the Scratch community. Thanks for watching everybody.